Hi, this is Dr. Larry Tranel, a dairy specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. Over the past couple of years, I've had the pleasure to analyze the profits of organic dairies in Iowa, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. What I have found is that organic dairying can be a very profitable way to produce milk, but no two farms are alike in production management with much variability in both production cost and profitability. So in this presentation, I want to help you understand organic dairying as a viable production system and option for producers. Then we will try to understand how to properly analyze the dairy for farm profits, which can mean different things to different people. Third, we want to go through the exercise of comparing average and higher profit dairies using a 2015 data set on 15 farms in Iowa. At the end, I will also cross compare with data from conventional and grazing dairies in Wisconsin, but it will be more of a test than answering which is most profitable. Then we will show and emphasize labor efficiency as a key to profits. And then lastly, we will try to understand the profit equation where profit depicted by return on assets or ROA equals ATO, which is asset turnover ratio, multiplied by OPM or operating profit margin. Let's begin with understanding organic dairying as a viable option. First, organic dairying is around 5% of the dairy product market, so it's getting a sizable foothold in the marketplace. In my individual and group farm analysis, I can confidently say that profits in organic dairy can match and probably even exceed profits of other well-managed dairies, as the top organic farms are doing extremely well financially. With that said, though, no profits are guaranteed as some producers are not covering their full cost of milk production when considering opportunity costs of both labor and equity. And even though there may be some regional difference, I would challenge that management plays more of a key role than geography. Let's move on to how to properly analyze a dairy for profits. Please do not consider Schedule F results or even the net cash or net farm income statements in determining if the farm is profitable because they are not all inclusive of information needed to truly analyze profits as compared with other producers. The full profit picture includes inventory adjustments and opportunity costs of both owned equity and unpaid labor. I have many examples of farms where the best Schedule F or net cash income or net farm income after inventory adjustments even do not end up being the most profitable operation. For example, a farm with a high net farm income may not be paying interest but has a large number of assets not accounted for or a large number of unpaid family labor hours not accounted for in comparison to someone who pays most of his or her labor. So the best way to properly analyze profits in my mind is a combination of these three items. First, if only using one measure, I would use rate of return on assets because it is an all-inclusive measure that marries the net worth statement and the net farm income statement into a very useful percent return that can be compared to other businesses or investments. Second, milk production costs per hundredweight equivalent so that we can see in dollar value how our expenses line up with our incomes, especially the milk price. Many people want to talk about individual incomes and expenses per cow, but a more useful way is to often to talk about production costs per hundredweight equivalent. And lastly, labor efficiency really comes out as a key, and to learn what return to unpaid labor and what they're earning after an equity charge for owned assets once they're taken out is very key and a very useful comparison to labor earnings in other jobs. Sometimes a farm may have the highest return to assets, but another farm may have lower production costs per hundredweight equivalent and or return to unpaid labor per hour, but typically they run together. So now that we know a bit more about what we're looking for, let's begin comparison of average and high profit organic dairies. Now the big question is not how organic dairies compare to against themselves, but how do they compete with other dairy systems, namely conventional confinement and non-organic grazing dairies. This table shows a comparison of conventional and the grazing and organic dairies with data from the Center for Dairy Profitability in the years 2011, 2012, and 2013 at UW-Madison in Wisconsin. A three-year average for pay price was $19.95, $20.69, and 
one cent for conventional grazing and organic dairies respectively, with organic receiving a milk price 40% higher over those years. And in 2015, the organic prey price is expected to be closer to 100% different. A three-year average for milk per cow shows the grazers with 35% less milk than conventional herds and organic producers even 9% less than grazing herds. So let's compare these pay prices and production to the net farm incomes. The three-year average shows the conventional herds at $624 per cow, the grazers at $672 per cow or 8% higher, and the organic herds at $859 per cow or 28% higher than the grazers. So at first look, considering 2015 pay prices, it would seem to say that organic dairy is definitely very competitive with other dairy systems, but let's consider this data a little closer. Does this data tell which herds are most profitable based on the analysis we just went through? And the answer is definitely no. The confinement herds may have both high debt loads, meaning they are paying lots of interest, and a very high percentage of labor paid out. The grazing or organic herds may have little debt and thus little interest paid. So thus, they may have lots of owned assets employed that we have yet to have accounted for in the way of an equity charge. Whether the farmer owns the assets or the bank, there is a cost to use those assets. In addition, the grazing and organic herds may have mostly unpaid family labor working the farm that hasn't been accounted for yet. So for all we know from this data, the conventional herds may be the most profitable because the analysis doesn't go far enough to determine full cost of production. 15 dairy farms were analyzed in Iowa using 2014 data. The average of the 15 farms is in the middle and the top one-third profit dairies are on the right. On a per cow basis, the first thing to note is that the high profit dairies had a 10 cent per hundredweight equivalent lower milk price. They sold $226 less milk and had 700 pounds lower milk production per cow, which to defies conventional dairy production wisdom. Understand, though, that two no-grain feeding dairies found their way into the high profit group, which significantly changed results in 2014 over 2013. Crop sales were significant with the higher profit farms 35% higher with 9.6% more land. So we recognize right away, hopefully, differences in profitability are on the expense side, even as total cash income for the high profit farms was $158 per cow lower than the average farm. On the expense side, the high profit farms purchased 47% less feed per cow with more crop sales, less milk per cow, and 9.6% more acres per cow. So a $340 difference in feed purchase per cow would lead me to suspect the higher profit farms had better yielding pasture and crop ground, or it was at least managed for better yields and quality. Total cash expense was $445 lower per cow for the high profit herds and $2.71 lower per hundredweight equivalent. So subtracting total cash expenses from total cash incomes gives a net cash income advantage to the higher profit farms. However, this still does not tell us if the farm is profitable since inventory changes and opportunity cost of equity or unpaid labor could negate positive net farm incomes. After taking out inventory changes, which could be gains or losses of feed, cattle, depreciation, etc., the higher profit farms have a net farm income $362 higher than the average farm but the higher profit farms are employing more assets and so have a higher equity charge per cow at 4%, which dwindles the return to unpaid labor down to $289 per cow or $2.03 per hundredweight equivalent advantage for the higher profit herds. If we take the return to unpaid labor and divide it by the number of unpaid labor hours, we get the labor earnings per hour, a key profit indicator for comparison purposes. This is typically the return to the owner operator or return to the unpaid family labor. Labor efficiency is a great strength in the more profitable herds in any dairy production system and it really holds true in this data set. The average unpaid labor earnings after 
all other costs are already accounted for, was $19.49, which is a respectable labor earning rate when comparing to other types of jobs. However, the high profit farms earned almost double that at $38.78 per hour. Another key profit indicator is cost of production per hundredweight equivalent. Income per hundredweight is set based on the milk price. All other incomes are divided by the milk price to add to the hundredweight equivalent. All expenses are divided by the hundredweight equivalents to give a gross expense per hundredweight equivalent. The opportunity costs of both unpaid labor and equity are already included, so it is a full total cost picture. So what is left after the average profit farm subtracted $48,267 for unpaid labor costs and the high profit farm subtracted $49,000, we see that the high profit farms earn $4.71 per hundredweight equivalent over all other costs or $4.08 more than the average profit farms. If the net income per hundredweight equivalent is negative, it means the farm could not cover all the costs of both unpaid labor or equity. In order to analyze strengths and weaknesses of these organic farms, we look at how well the farms are using resources in the way of labor, cows, and capital. So let's start with labor. An FTE is a full-time equivalent of 3,000 hours worked annually. Notice the higher gross return per FTE, even with the lower milk production per cow, the number of cows per FTE, hundred weights of milk sold per FTE, and the labor cost per cow. The capital efficiency measures the capital cost per cow, the fixed cost per cow, or the capital invested per cow, and realize they do not show large differences here. However, if we're comparing the high and the low profit groups, capital efficiency tends to show a much more significant uh, difference relative to profitability. Capital efficiency on a per crop acre basis shows the inverse of what one might expect and mostly due to the higher land base per cow in this particular data set. The fertilizer and seed cost per acre is highlighted as the higher cost of fertilizer, especially for higher profit farms, tends to hold pretty true. So just like not feeding a cow properly can have some serious profit implications, not fertilizing land properly can have some serious land productivity problems. Thus, yes, higher profit farms tend to have higher fertilizer costs than medium or lower profit farms as crop yields are pretty important to the total profit picture. So let's take a minute to further sum up the importance of labor efficiency. Remember that our comparison here showed that per cow and per crop acre and some capital efficiency items were variable in the profitability of the higher profit herds. But there is not variability in labor efficiency items in terms of our data set. Time and time again, as I look at dairy analyses and compare data sets from farm to farm, labor efficiency tends to be the strongest correlation to dairy profits of any. In fact, I tend to find that some of the most profitable organic dairies tend to milk in a trans-Iowa low-cost milking parlor or some similar type. And even though 100 weights of milk sold per FTE laborer tends to have a very high correlation to profits in my mind, realize that even these high-profit dairies are well short of a good organic goal of six to 8,000 100 weights of milk sold per FTE laborer for conventional grazing or confinement producers, a good goal is 1.2 million pounds of milk sold per FTE. Again, the bottom line with organic or other type of dairy, design a labor efficient system. So our last objective is to understand the profit equation. Return to assets marries the net worth statement to the net farm income statement, as I mentioned earlier, and is an all-inclusive measure that can, can be compared to other businesses and investments. The OPM, the operating profit margin, measures profit per unit of output, or how much of what you take in do you keep as profit, so the price you receive versus the cost you pay. Grazing dairies and organic dairies tend to have a strength in operating profit margin relative to other systems. Asset turnover ratio measures the profit based on volume of output with the thought of how many years does it take to gross enough income to pay for all the assets on the farm. Thus, 2.5 to 3 years is an acceptable goal. 3 years would equate to an asset turnover ratio of 33%. Now we get to the bottom line of the profit equation. 
the high profit group beat the average in return on assets with an operating profit margin almost double that the average. This high profit group, however, did make the goal with an asset turnover ratio of 27.37%, while the average farm did beat the 33% the goal with an ATO and asset turnover ratio of 34.04%. So I realize that's been a lot of numbers to look at, but in this presentation, I wanted to help you understand organic dairying as a viable production system and an option for producers because it definitely is. And the numbers and the proof is in the pudding. Then when we try to understand how to properly analyze a dairy for farm profits, we realize it can mean different things for different people, especially as our test with the previous slide that showed that the organic system may be that much more profitable than a conventional system, but we can kind of disprove that a little bit too because there's more information that we need to know to decide for sure. Third, when we compared average and higher profit dairies using the 2014 data set on 15 farms in Iowa, it kind of helped us understand what was going on. And then we showed and emphasized labor efficiency as a key to profits. Lastly, we came to understand the profit equation where profit depicted by return on assets or ROA equals ATO or the asset turnover ratio multiplied by the operating profit margin. So the bottom line is hopefully we've given you some tools and some insight to further analyze the profitability and the economics of organic dairy. Thanks for listening. Thank you.